Hello there people. So now this is going to be the start of a new chapter which is called gravitation. So in this chapter we study a lot more advanced concepts than the ones that you're already familiar with. So for example if I were to just give you a couple of equations in which we, we have seen the use of the concepts of gravity. So you know for example that weight is given by this formula. Right? The mass times the acceleration due to gravity or another way of understanding this constant as we also say this is the gravitational field strength. And you also see this uh, formula again. For example, if I were to talk to you about gravitational potential energy, so you know that that is given by this expression. Right? So this is another place where you see some concepts of gravity. But now when we are going to talk about this chapter in A2, we'll be taking a much more macroscopic approach. So basically we'll be talking about planets or even satellites in orbit and how they interact, how do masses, how are masses affected by those. So a lot of the stuff that actually explains a lot of real life scenarios will be understood with the help of this chapter. Uh, according to examination, this topic is of a lot of gravity, a pun very much intended. So for example, in your 100 marks A2 paper, you get around 10 to 15 marks worth of uh, a question based on this chapter alone, right? And again, a prerequisite for this chapter is the last chapter of circular motion, right? Because when we talk about planets or any other sort of a satellite, which is an orbit, we assume that that orbit is approximately circular. Right, so this is a uh, so circular motion is a prerequisite, and you may remember there as well. I gave you an example that in uh, planets in orbit, the centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force of attraction. So we'll be looking at that in a lot of detail in this chapter. So, for example, if I show you this animation of the Earth in orbit around the Sun, so we can see that not only is the Earth going around, it's also spinning in the process. And the idea is that the spinning of the Earth gives rise to a day, whereas one full orbit gives rise to a year. So how does this orbit take place in a manner that it never drifts out of the circle, right? So there must be some certain signs to this which is allowing it to rotate in this sort of an orbit without either drifting in, either uh, coming in and crashing into the sun or drifting out into deep space. Right, so that is also due to the force of attraction and we'll be studying that force of attraction between the Earth and the Sun or any other planets or satellites in orbit for that matter in a lot more detail. Right? So now we'll be talking about something that a lot of you may have seen and this is not something that is very old. This is something that just happened over the past month or maybe more. So I won't spoil this further for you. Let's just go ahead and have a look at the video. Everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Easter and the Starship vehicle. So apparently after clearing the tower, everything was not the icing on the cake. So the idea is that a lot of people started bashing SpaceX for not uh, for not having a rocket which clears uh, the atmosphere which does not get uh, launched into outer space. And here you can see the face of a person who actually has money to burn. And uh, the idea is that this rocket was never intended for actually going out into the space. If you just ever look into SpaceX, uh, what it had to say about this launch, this was just a test rocket 
and what they did in this launch was just to have a feel of uh, how the conditions go and how their experiment uh, tests out so that they can improve if there are any shortcomings in their future rockets right so uh, this wasn't uh, a total failure this actually provided uh, spacex with a lot of insight as to what uh, were the problems and how could they improve them further but theoretically speaking if you do have a rocket which you want to project into outer space what speed should it have and this is a very common question that a lot of people may have in their minds that even if you ignore air resistance all that stuff like that what should the speed what should be the speed of a rocket which wants to go out into outer space now this is actually one of the things that we will be discussing in this chapter and this is something called escape velocity so basically the idea is just that the rocket must have enough speed that it can escape the atmosphere of the earth and go out into space similarly how we talk about satellites which are obviously of a lot of importance to us they provide us with internet they pro provide us with television and it's it also provides us with for example the uh, the movements of other planets and stars so how do you also launch something into an orbit be it a satellite or anything so that is just a teaser of what is to come in this chapter. So stay tuned and you'll learn a lot in this chapter. Bye.